KLG do not take away the Rakan. Fnatic definitely no strangers to picking up the power duo. We'll see what Chaos Latin Gamers decide to get. They got two picks available to themselves. Eyeballing a jungle choice. And the Elise is always a very good takeaway from Brox. It's a champion he's shined on quite a lot. It's a good takeaway, but it also sacrifices the safety and reliability of a Gragas gank as an example, and being a tank. So now you've got a squishy member. This is something that we have to talk about, Pyra. The Shen getting locked in for Mantaraya. He is a great Shen player. He's in fact one of the pivot points of the team that looks outstanding when he's on the pick. And not the only one. Soaz has played this champion quite a lot over the years and it's been one of his favorites. In fact, they've had a lot of takeaways already. But on the Fnatic side, the bands, uh, the, the picks keep coming really quickly. A Rek'Sai is locked in and then we get the Rakan. But for KLG, they turn it right around. Okay, we'll grab the Tristana. No surprises here as we enter ban phase two. I mean, frankly, this is about picking for themselves and banning from your opposition right now. You've got the Nidalee removed, the Syndra taken away from Caps as well. Then you've got the Cogmore specifically away from Fix. However, they've got Zyra Khan and Orexai for Broxa. They've got the Tristana there for the bottom lane. Things look pretty good for both of these teams in their own respective ways. And you can see what KLG is doing right now. They're focusing on some of the more esoteric picks that we've seen out of Caps over the course of this year in his rookie season. The Aurelian Soul is only a champion we saw out of him once in the LCS in summer, uh, but it, it was pretty beastly, and he's still got a lot more power to play with, but let's see what Fnatic takes off. It's going to be the Talia band away against Plugo. Yeah, Talia, very much a valid band from Plugo. There's a bunch of mid lane champions still there because the Aurelian Soul band, whilst it's nice, isn't standard. This is much more standard, of course. Cassiopeia, another champion of choice that may step up to attention now very possible but yeah with the LeBlanc band away that's definitely another cap special and very standard pick as well and now do they keep focusing on the mid do they thin out that pool a little bit more they've got 10 seconds still to decide Ariana for protecting the Tristana or the Zyre is always going to be a high priority champion remember that Chaos Light and Gamers being on the red side have the first pick of this second pick phase and so if there's something that stands out such as the Ariana that I mentioned you want to remove that before they can pick it first yeah you called it so it's back over to Chaos Latin Gamers it looks like they're thinking about filling things out with their support. They want that counter pick mid, so it's the Alistar that comes out. Also just they're an unsurprising Tristana. champion of choice to go towards the Alistar with the Tristana. That's the 2v2 that you pick into Zaya and Rakan. So comfortable knowing that's where Fnatic wanted to go. Seems like they do have a plan through this draft phase, KLG, and they've equipped themselves quite nicely to be able to match what Fnatic are throwing at. So the Galio comes in and, ooh, that's a quick lock in on the rise. Very back in quick. for Caps. He says, all right, I saw what Jensen could do. I'm gonna do it too. And I really like this pick, to be honest with you as well. Rise is someone that I've been high on for a couple of weeks now, thinking that it might be someone that we see more of at Worlds. Just the reliability of the champion is something that needs to be spoken about. The W will stun you. And the fact that that hits means in a competitive game, it's a lot easier for the follow-up to be seen. But at the same time, this is a champion that we mentioned that's locked in last. Pretty good into the Rise matchup. Yeah, and Plugo, he definitely has the experience to come to bear now. Speaking of experience, so Caps did play a lot of this Rise way back in spring in his rookie split. It was his most played champion. Uh, but of course, as Rise went down in priority, we started to see things shift a little bit. So he'll be able to pull back some of that skill and we'll see how it all shakes out with Fnatic versus Chaos Light and Gamers. A lot of momentum on this KLG team, but Fnatic is a very different opponent to play up against. <laughs> yeah, slightly different ballpark uh, to be playing. <laughs> a, little, a little bigger. Now, little bigger. Uh, yeah, we've gone from YG from the second Vietnamese side to the third best team in Europe, and I'll say third best because they've qualified third. Everyone else has their own opinions on where exactly they stand in terms of strength. Fnatic at their best could be the best in Europe, for all we know. We're just really yet to see if they're going to be at their best coming into this tournament. Yeah, for Fnatic. Have to play in the plans, obviously. A bit of a blow to the team as they stumbled in the quarterfinal matchup against Misfits. But this is a team that definitely learns their lessons. We saw them, frankly, get blasted at Rift Rivals, and they came back stronger than ever before. So able to do the same thing here on the world stage. Chaos Latin Gamers, they've got to watch their backs right now. Fnatic when angry is definitely not a squad you want to tangle with. And a lot of this, first and foremost, is how can KLG get through the early game against their opponents of Fnatic? The last team they played against, it was okay, Young Generation, the early game. They had an early game comp, and they held on fine. They got to late game, they scaled, they team fought, everything that you wanted from the side, but Fnatic I mean, they could still win that early game. They've got the Rek'Sai that can get around the Rift, can control Summoner's Rift and match that of an Elise. I feel like there's a really high probability that we're fighting at level three. I think it's definitely going to happen. Broxa, of course, one of the reasons he favors the champion like Elise so much, we also saw him play a lot of Gragas too. He likes to get in early and try to make things happen. This Rek'Sai is definitely gonna fit that bill. 
And we know that Tierwolf loves to do the exact same thing. The guy is running the direction of the early game from KLG. Fans are definitely getting hyped. They certainly are. It's almost like they're holding the microphone right now. <laughs> uh, Tierwolf, yeah, you mentioned his early pathing, his early aggression. I feel like the dichotomy of this game, however, that we're going to watch is which side of the rift is Tierwolf on and where does he want to prioritize? Because, frankly, I would still want him bottom lane. I still want him to affect the bottom lane, but Rek'Sai ganking mid lane, very much an accessible thing. It's a cleanse from Plugo. Uh, so the knockups don't get affected by any means. It's just the Rise W that'll lock him down. And with the amount of early damage they have, most importantly, that's what means the most. So both teams having a oh, pretty get good it. time to get things started. I don't know. That cowbell is always a surefire way to victory. So Slow knows the secret strats. I've always said the best team compositions on Summoner's Rifts are the onesie duo. So we're not <laughs> going to see that. I feel like they've lessened their strength right now, KLG. There's no Maokai's. Well, fortunately uh, for Shen. Or Nas. No ninja in pajamas. Or Annie's. There's, I just realized there's four of them. <laughs> Quite a few. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. You had one of those moments. I did? Yeah. All right, well, we're kicking things off. We'll see if they end up making plays down in the bottom side. That level three, definitely want to track that as the game unfolds. Of course, pretty hard leash here for Tier Wolf, so you could expect him to get started maybe even a little sooner than that. A yeah, nice little leash from the bottom lane, Jua. They'll be able to give him a whole lot of health, a bit of tempo perhaps. At the same time, Galio cannot match that of a Tristana and an Alistar. But it also means they don't get tempo in the bottom lane 2v2. So you go, you do damage for your jungler, you sacrifice a level one in lane against a Rakan and Zarya, who can walk up to you. But they're fighting. Yeah, they really want to. Jez is taking a lot of damage early off that explosive shot, but they hold on to their summoners for the time being. It's a curious trade from Jessus. Of course, he's got his coin, so he'll get health back when minions die. And at level two, you would assume he goes towards the Q to get a heal. Alistar more reliant on the passive on minions dying to get those heals. So you can expend and trade health as support. I'm okay with that from the Rakan in this matchup, as long as Reckless is healthy and safe. But Tearwolf, he's got his eye in. Oh boy, they have got to be careful. The level two gank of the Elise Reckless, he might have to work flash. Oh, the heal is already spent, and he just keeps the cocoon. Doesn't need to spend Teleport's it, but then teleport in. coming in. Flash away from Tearwolf, and do they have the damage? They do with the last feather. It's Reckless picking up first blood for summoners to get away, turn it back around. And Broxa now looking towards mid lane. Uh-oh, Cassio put into Rune Prison. Plugo, he's trying to slither away, but nothing for him to do. And that's going to be Broxa picking up a kill. Fnatic starting this one off right. Very much aware that he wasn't going to get out to safety. Plugo just calls it early and says, I will fight Caps. Acknowledge that death is going to be. They didn't cleanse because he didn't see the Rek'Sai until the flank was just too severe. So well done from Broxa. Well done from Caps. Good communication. Tearwolf, gank's bottom, dies. Suddenly, what is a level two cheese that sometimes works that puts you maybe a minute behind at most in the jungle is now even more than that because Broxa comes in, gets a kill. He's now got the experience lead, has the red buff for health regeneration. He is just going to be a nightmare for Tier Wolves. Yeah, and honestly, all Fnatic had to do to really get out of that one, a couple of summoners burned, Cap spent his teleport and then ended up canceling it. But look what's happening as a result. Broxa has a level advantage. Maybe he can't quite oh get the steal Oh my god, up, he didn't he even fight it. That was a praise seeker steal. Tearwolf's having an awful early game. Daylight robbery from Tearwolf. Still level two, doesn't have smite. All I can say to you is have fun at Krugs, buddy, because they are going to destroy you. I mean that as well, they hurt. There's a lot of them. The Itsy Bitsy Spider is going to stay just that size for a little while longer. So Fnatic, they're off to a flying start in this game. A thousand gold lead already in the pocket of the jungler and the AD carry, respectively. And Fnatic showing that it's definitely a different caliber of team as KLG a little antsy in the early game, getting punished for it. Whole different kind of early game to be experienced by Chaos Latin gamers. And so with this early start, at least almost a non-factor for quite some time, just going to be a cocoon bot. Yeah. Do absolute hardest to just crowd control and support the team. I mean, just, just start building tank right off the bat. You don't even bother getting the blue, uh, getting the blue upgrade. I mean, we're gonna find out. I would probably just go straight into something tanky, but you also need to have that damage. Or what is your relevance of being a lease? Like, why not just have picked another champion to begin with if you don't intend to do damage for your composition? Yeah, that's a good point. But uh, poor fanatic, definitely pretty happy with the way things have unfolded here. Maybe. We start to look to other lanes of KLG to make things happen. Mantaraya, once he hits level six, he's only on five. He could start to turn things around, fix a little low under tower, but there is always the ability of the Shen Shield dive. I mean, the wards place. Oh, this tanky turret. Nice double knock up there. As slow, he's able to get off a few more auto attacks. It's done under Reckless. And Maybe this is the Fnatic bot lane overextending just a little bit. Really nice from slow as well to get the turret aggro and the timing with the pulverize. So 
very much a commendable showing, but it only equalizes the trade. And that's the most unfortunate thing is here we go. Uh, Tearwolf can't catch a break, man. Everywhere he goes, Brox is there. Cocoon comes out. He's already down to half his health. Still Watching the level advantage. And waiting. Uh, Blue Ghost actually back. got the collapse. Uh-oh. Well, Bro Broxo might have gone a little too far forward. He flashes. Caps is coming in. Let's see if they can get the kill, though. That's a lot of damage oh. out of Caps. Woo! Mid lane and jungle both going down, and TP's canceled. They're looking for Jessus, but they're not going to find him either. Teleport used by Mantaraya. He still has the ultimate when he ticks over to six, so it should be okay for a Shen to make a play like that. And ultimately, Rek'Sai, I mean, Broxo was very far forwards. He did it with good reason, because he wants to stay ahead of the Elise and bully her around, but his team wasn't able to rotate nearly as quickly as that of Chaos Latin Gamers. The fact that they're stuck at the turret almost is a blessing. The biggest problem is that Plu goes here. He's able to use the W, so barely, I will say, Broxer gets to flash range by dodging out on that. And they're lucky they get a trade as an end result here. Fnatic, just off the aggression of Broxer. Yep. The red buff goes into the ether as well, both the jungler and the mid laner just die at the exact same moment. That's, there's some uh, synergy for sure, even if it's on the opposite end of the team. The wrong kind of synergy, <laughs> unfortunately, for Cap. Some might have wanted a red buff. Yeah, would have been nice for him to have, but you know, he's still not having too shabby of a landing phase. Just keeps stacking, of course. I mean, frankly, he's having a fantastic time just because he's got his catalyst and tier. You compare that to the items of Plugo and where he's going to have to go with his build. Still a little while behind that. Mm -hmm. Of course, one kill. I mean, it's definitely relieving after the rough landing start he's already had to be able to pick up at least a kill onto Broxa, even if he dies for the effort. For sure. So, you know, as Cassiopeia, he's gonna need all he can get, of course. Dealing with this rise is not gonna get any easier, and Caps, you know, he might be a lot less experienced than Plugo, but we have a, a saying over in the European LCS, Rusty, it's a EU mids man, and Caps is definitely fitting the bill. He's definitely an EU mid man, I'll give you that. Yeah. I have a lot of those in NA. That's what I interpret from you saying, by the way. He is an EU mid. Quite, quite a lot, you quite a lot of high-skilled mid laners. Nailed it. Sure. One. No, I know what you mean, don't worry. <laughs> Brox is back at the blue buff again, but he's got backup now. It's okay. KLG are very much still aware of this. It might just be a smite steal. Wait and bait. Let's see, Plug Spiderling comes out. Oh, he's going to try to get Tear Wolf out on this one. Smite goes down. They're going to look to transfer it over. Slow and Fix coming Gen in, and now Mataraya. Let's see. Oh, wants to get the bowling ball going, and now Fix has tagged his way in. And all of a sudden, we've got a real scrap in this river with Mataraya getting the first kill out. Jezz's. He nearly falls down, but the heroic entrance comes, comes out, directly. and they turn it right back around, baby. KLG running for their lives without Tear Wolf. Rox is already down. Oh, they He's still want this. But they're going to keep on going. Soaz looking for the shield. And the Feather Storm comes out right into the taunt. Soaz getting one. They're going to look for more. Reckless has two. And Plugo trying desperately to slither away, forcing to flash. And Caps is still on the chase. He goes. Oh, no, he missed. Misses the Q. Goes oh. for one more Rune Prison under the tower. And Caps is going to be able to secure it. Actually gets the empowered Rune Prison as well by missing the Q. So enough CC duration to All ensure planned. he gets another spell rotation out. We're going to watch this one back again. Tearwolf goes for the blue buff, but throws out his W before he goes for the steal. So he has more damage, perhaps, than that of Brox, or he's going to try. Caps goes to get in and help, but leaves it. So he's just going to walk out. Oh, no, it gets grounded. No, it gets cancelled. So you know what? Works out OK in the end. I didn't realize that the grounding would immediately cancel that one. But here comes KLG. Mantaraya makes the difference. The Shen comes in. Soaz is just dealing with the Cassiopeia. So it looks like perhaps he'll be able to get himself out. Dodges the ultimate at the perfect timing. And this is where it all turns around. The thing that's the most impressive about this is Soaz getting the massive taunt as Reckless ults, knowing that KLG are just gonna desperately try and counter this by slow sacrificing himself. Big taunts, big plays. The fact that Reckless flashes as well to try and get that E back. Honestly, it's just individual stuff that we're seeing from Fnatic through these moments where KLG are throwing themselves at them. Yeah, I mean, the, the story of Fnatic with the mental fortitude, obviously that comes to bear when you're up against opponents that are putting you on the ropes, but for KLG right now, the story is very much the opposite. They're the ones that are having so much trouble. And a large part of it is definitely reckless. You look at how he performed in the European LCS, and there's a reason we gave this man the MVP. I mean, if you can average over 10 CS a minute, you're doing something very right. Not to mention uh, 10 point. 9 KDA as well. Very nuts. Very good player. And now he's 3 0 2. And that's the major concern for anyone going up against Azaya Rakan with a 3 0 2 reckless. Yep. That kill participation pretty solid across the board for you look at the mid lane, you look at the bottom. It's all together here. Let's see if they can stay alive though. Reckless Jezzes, they're going to go for the charm play. And in comes Broxa forcing the jump out of Fix, leaving his support for dead. And Broxa was not done with that Tristana. Down he goes. Now Mantaraya and Slow here trying 
Where to go? Earwolf's there, but I don't think they've got a whole lot of damage to work with Slow. He keeps getting those massive knockups, but there's no backup damage as Caps gets the cow. Looking for Mantaraya, Reckless. He's even gonna stay alive. And the rest of KLG, they gotta scatter. Slow is playing this game incredibly well, but it's not the kind of play that'll get them the advantages, get them the kills. He's only one member of the five-man unit, and right now it looks like Fnatic, as five, are just stronger than their opponents. And ultimately, that is what's getting them these little bit of extra details. You know, Slow goes forwards, pulverizes them, and then Fix has to jump away. But it's not gonna save him from Broxer, who is Rek'Sai with an ultimate, as Caps is just taking the quick path, avoiding where they are. That was very cheeky. He'll get the cooldown back up soon enough. Not it's almost worry. like he knew. Might have. Now let's see this play one more time. So of course, Slow goes forwards. I think it's a great headbutt pulverized combo and timing. They didn't know Broxter was right there. Turns out he was. Suddenly Fix needs to ult him to safety, but that's not really safety. That's the opposite. And then Slow's caught. The thing that I like about this is that Slow, whilst caught, makes the decision to help the team. He goes towards Tear Wolf and times it incredibly well. I still think Slow's playing outstanding, but Reckless, I mean, he's doing damage. Caps is doing damage throughout all of this. Nothing's gonna stop the extra members of Fnatic doing more than KLG. Yeah, what can you do when you're this far behind this early on in the game? And 10 kills to two, that's making up a massive goal differential. And this is definitely not what you want if you're Chaos Latin Gamers, an Infernal Dragon being given over to Fnatic with no chance of you contesting. No. That's not what you want at all, Pyra. I don't know what to give you with that one. It's I mean, keep coming. It's free, it's theirs. The next one, not going to be Infernal, so that's where they count their blessings. That's the thing, Fnatic, they don't necessarily have to show anything particular right now because, as you said, it's it's individual, just better play. But also, as a five-man unit, they can just group up as long as they have the pressure. Once again, Broxa just living inside this KLG jungle. To be fair, Fnatic are living pretty much inside the KLG base. Uh, in the next few minutes as this team keeps going. And you know, one thing we have to talk about as well is the Abyssal Mask is the item of choice for Caps on his Rise. Of course, similar to what a Cassiopeia will do for herself, Rise is now going to go towards the Abyssal Mask build. He can do that in this game because there is an Elise in the jungle, so having two AP champions means that it's free access towards the item, and then it becomes much more efficient. Yes, they buff the AP ratio on the W by 0.4, but why would you not have the extra magic resistance and be tankier as Ryze, who is a machine gun for dealing damage, opposed to having a bit of extra AP? Yeah, give them a little bit of extra. And you know, they, they've got some pretty tanky frontline as well to go up with the fact that he's going to have increased resistances. So as on the Righteous Glory, could be able to close those gaps even better. We've already seen what Brox has been able to do. And this is Warrior Rek'Sai too, so he deals some serious damage to top it all off. Yeah, he definitely does. He's going to be doing a whole lot of work. With four kills, having the Warriors means that he's potentially just snowballed enough that you would never really call Rek'Sai a fragile champion or an easy-to-kill champion, especially now that he's gone towards Merc Treads and has the Health Crystal on top of it. So from the next item purchase, Broxa dying becomes almost a fleeting dream for the side of KLG in any kind of 1v1 situations. It's a team fight, and they'll be lucky to get him above all else with how the state of this game has progressed. You're hard pressed to catch him alone. The guy's so mobile. As soon as he's just about anywhere, the rest of the team's not too far behind either. Uh, 13, almost 14 minutes into this game, it's looking bleaker and bleaker for Chaos Latin Gamers. It was such a great start for this team up against Young Generation, but Fnatic are definitely proving a much tougher opponent. They certainly are, and they're showing that early game does mean a lot. When you have oh, yeah. a composition that still scales, however, Fnatic, are able to utilize that early game strength of some of the laners. You know, Fnatic's bottom lane 2v2 wins in that sense by level one, just knowing that KLG have gone for a leash. And quite simply, lane control means Rakan and Zaya will always win a 2v2 trade. Suddenly, the bottom lane is the opposite of what happened for KLG in their game against Young Generation, and things look completely different for the team. Tier Wolf, I mean, he ganks bottom. You'd expect him to gank the bottom. You wouldn't expect him to die when ganking bottom lane. And we can look back at that play, and I still think the biggest problem was Fix and Slow not being level two. So it was the timing from Tier Wolf that was the biggest failure above all else. Yeah. Pulling the and trigger look what early. I feel, I feel like the level two game, maybe that wasn't the necessary time to do it. The level three might have been a little more effective, have all your tools at your disposal. So I'm still okay with the level two gank as an ideology of like, why would I gank at level two? But ultimately, it's because his bottom lane didn't go early, as that was an alt attempt. All right, Caps, let's see if he can go for the 1v2 Tier Wolf. They're already taking a little low, and He's grounded. He's able to walk back to Broxa though, and in goes Slow, forced the flash out. Oh, they're, nice attempt, but they're gonna turn right back around. It's Broxa with the start up of the kill, and Slow nowhere for him to go. As he stopped up for just a second, Monteraya is gonna save his life. 
I don't know if they can save this tower though, Rusty. Lucky to be alive is the Alistar in this situation. Caps holds on to his flash for as long as possible. Broxa is just gonna cross the eye of the Herald and summon it straight after the fight happens. Very strong reactive play coming out of the Fnatic roster in a fairly clean showing so far. Even Soaz is here to have a piece of it. Yeah, there goes the Siege. Quick hit, one, two, three, and down it goes. And they're not even stopping for breath with the Rift Herald still wailing away at the mid inhibitor tower. Soaz still there. Look, they've already been able to knock down an inner tower in the bottom. Oh no, Rift Fnatic Herald. just on a roll, man. Rift Herald is but a ruse. They don't actually want to push with it any further. It gives them the one turret that they were basically going to have themselves optimizes and gets themselves a second turret as a result. Now, Caps, remember that the Cassiopeia ultimate was already used and did not stun. He gets the Storm Raider surge proc. He starts to walk away. That's where he chooses to flash, and that is great because Jessus is able to get in at the correct time. Reckless is already here to ensure there is free escape for Ricard and Fix. I mean, he's here but is here really going to provide anything when the fight was already over? Really good stuff from Fnatic, just being there once again, quicker. This is just the reaction time from this team. They know that when there's an opportunity to make a play, they pull the trigger quite quick, and it's just more than KLG can handle. I will take an opportunity now, though, as nothing's happening on Summoner's Rift, to look at the vision that Chaos Light and Gamers have got, because that's a lot. Like, as far as vision goes, that's a whole lot of wards. One has just died, and it starts to reduce it further. But they have got defensive areas. They've got places where they can set themselves up and maybe look for a pick. It's an Elise Shen Cassiopeia with an Alistar, so that's a composition that's very good at picks. I mean, I have to give them that. Their vision is there. They definitely got all the tools to try and succeed, but the question is, who do you end up picking right now? Because Jezus, he's hard to catch. He's on the Recon. Reckless has got too many escapes, and he's playing safe enough anyways. And then they already tried Caps, and he got away at the last second. <laughs> okay. a slippery team. I'm going to give them the vision for a pick when the question is who can they pick? Not a lot. Like, they'll be able to kill Jesses because he's an ardent sensor Rakan. And yeah. if there's five people in a bush, I'm sure someone would still die. It's just a very difficult thing to do. Once again, Rek'Sai exists on Summoner's Rift. So. Yeah, there's a reason I left out Soaz and Broxa because they're just tanky enough to survive anyways. And now they're pretty much living inside the KLG topside jungle. Clearing out some of the wards, not everything, but they've got a few. Let's see if they can keep pushing this one. I don't think they want it with Fix slow and of course Plugo already there. And they see Tearwolf coming out of the rushes. Now so this turret should still be fine. That's the thing. And they're not really going to be able to just take the turret. If you're Fnatic right now, I'd say your best bet is just to get a pick before you go towards the structure. Yep. Same thing that happened in the middle lane before they summoned the Rift Herald. And you know that KLG are not usually adverse to fighting by any means. They like to have a bit of a brawl. Fnatic very much happy to match that brawl and fight them in the middle. But with the vision that KLG had, it's harder to do. And so now the vision comes before the pick. Fnatic just left to clear away the jungle of KLG, trying to starve them out as best they possibly can. If it feels like it's slowed down, it's because Fnatic could pretty much run Plum out of objectives to take. Yeah, you've kind of got to... Well, you've got a Cloud Drake. You can take that one. I think Broxo will most likely just solo that as he's got some free time. And yes, there is a, uh, a Baron in 1 minute and 30 seconds with the lead that Fnatic have got at 10,000 gold basically already at 18 minutes. You'd expect the Baron is a free objective or it's a giant bait that will result in a team fight and a game one. Yeah, you can see that gold reflected in items across the board, right? The, the Zanya's Hourglass is already the difference between what Caps and Plugo have already. Uh, the Rek'Sai damage, of course, pretty much being a little further enhanced by the Phage and pretty easy dragon take, so Fnatic are gonna be a little faster on their feet with a minute before the Baron spawns. Yeah. You gotta think they're just gonna try to bait KLG out of their base. And what I like about this for Fnatic is that the gold lead is on every single member of the team. There's no one person that's incredibly fed. They're all ahead by an amount. Jungle's doing super well. We saw the early pressure that he was able to put down. But even the support role, Jessus has found himself with a sizable gold advantage. So ultimately, Fnatic, all of the win conditions that a team could need, all set up at the exact same time. They just need to knock it down. Just waiting for the hammer to swing. But of course, as we've seen so many times at this world so far, and, and even today, We've seen a lot of teams with the lead not necessarily going too deep, not trying to fight it out too hard because they know they just have those big advantages. And Fnatic are not going to fall for that one. They invented the death brush. <laughs> yes, they did, but sometimes you do fall to your own creations by not expecting others to replicate it. That's very true. Maybe not this time around, though. You can see them playing back with a little bit of respect. A lot of creators die to their own designs, Byra. If you optimize too hard, machines fight back, man. That's some scary stuff, man. I'm just quoting iRobot. Oh, okay. I was reading a lot of articles Smith, about man, AI, AI lately. I thought, you were, I thought you were going on about that. I'd say Will Smith isn't very scary. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy. Well, you know, it's very scary right now. Entire Fnatic team. KLG, all they can do to really clear waves just to try and back away. And speaking of clearing, the wards, they're going down. Yeah. That vision is going dark pretty soon. Kind of reminiscent of the Rampage game of the last one that we just watched as well against Hong Kong Attitude. As you watch KLG, where can they go? Where is a safe area to be on Summoner's Rift? Well, the answer is behind the inner turrets where they have a vision line. And even that's shrinking. Yeah, it looks like they're not going to be able to get much else out. Now Fix, he does get away from the charm at the last second. The tower's already going to fall. Tear Wolf is forced to get a month that I ult on top of him. It's going to be a little bit too little, a little bit too late as the tower does fall. 21 minutes. Fnatic, looks like they're going the express route in Oh, no, two minutes. So close, Cap, so close, man, but it's not quite what we wanted. But they should still be able to get themselves the Baron. There's the two Sky Absorbs at the same time. Even the synergy there is removed from KLG, but there's no chance to get to the pit. Yeah, they still got the Baron, but uh, Cap's definitely needs to work a little bit on his spell casting. That's like when you call an Uber, but there's only room for three of your friends. He did it for himself, I think. That's <laughs> the problem, is he clicked it when he was in range, didn't realize that half of it wasn't going to be. They've still got the Baron, they're still set up to Plague. Now Chaos Light and Gamers, knowing that they're down that far, are just going to try and clear the waves out as quickly as they can. Push the minions as far back, maybe by 30 seconds of the Baron's timer that Fnatic then have to spend pushing. Yeah, just try to stall it out best you can. And remember, they do have some serious scaling. There's Cassiopeia, they've got the Tristana. They're not going to get any weaker. The problem is, their counterparts are ridiculously big right now. And you can already see the needlessly large rod, of course, on the Caps, Reckless. Taking the safe route, QSS, you know, doesn't want to risk himself getting CC'd to death. Of course. I mean, it's a safe option. I think that's very much a valid thing to do. You've got the Shen Taunt, the Elise Cocoon. All of these things can lock you down, and then they can follow with the other crowd control. That's the strength of the composition that Chaos Light and Gamers have got for themselves. So Reckless with the QSS, just that much harder to kill. But still, we are seeing a lot of overexertion from Fnatic. You feel like they're far enough ahead that they can afford to do so. But that last dive in the top lane did expend a fair amount of resources. You can see Soaz, he didn't get the charms exactly where he wanted to, or the sun. Whoa, they just go right on in, and it's Caps coming up with kill number one. Now, all of a sudden, KLG find themselves only with four members to defend, and Mantaraya is not even there. No ult. He'd have to TP in if he wants, and he's on top of the tower. Fnatic, they're going to push it. He ends up canceling it at the last second. He wouldn't have been able to complete the TP anyways. And now Fnatic are just bowling into this base. Yeah, he's going to have to walk over. The inhibitor will go down. Slow dies because he doesn't have the ultimate there. Ten seconds on the Alistar means that Fnatic took, should take the safe option. They should recall, reassess, and spend a lot of money, honestly, which is, I'm sure, what they've got. Yeah, so instead of a slow, calculated push, they just beat down the front door. Walk right on in and uh, Mantavaya, no ult, no TP. And whether they knew Slow had his ultimate or not as Alistar, it was still well played from the Fnatic side. Perhaps the mistake lies with Slow on deciding to headbutt Pulverize so as whoever extends himself. Ends up costing his own life trying to take down a Galio. Not really the priority target if you're the Alistar. But the only one that could get in range of, unfortunately. Fnatic not presenting a whole lot of squishy targets. And now you can see utilizing this Baron just 4-1. This is a Reckless special, of course. He does love to split push on the AD carries. That might be the chance for KLG to try and catch him, but with the QSS, with QSS the speed, and ultimate. I don't know. Oh, they're going to need to spend a lot. Oh, missed the cocoon. That was their only chance at an opportunity because Jessus is now looking to kill slow. Yep, never just going to be one. And they turn. And the Galio. Donna looking for Fixin. Oh, it's a hero's entrance, and slow is left for dead. So as going right into the back line and Fnatic. One, two, three, looking to clean house. That's a double kill for Caps. They keep on chasing all the way back to Fountain. Get in the room, Prison. And down he goes. Fnatic inside this base as Mantaraya just trying to tank up Jez's. But meanwhile, this base is going to fall to shambles. I mean, if you're Caps right now, you use your ultimate, you bring some minions to the Nexus, and you end the game immediately. But it looks like. Mid lane inhibitor should still be enough time. They've got four members dead. Fnatic should be able to take this game down and cleanly destroy Chaos Light and Gamers. Man, Hong Kong Attitude, I thought they had a fast one at 25 and a half minutes, but Fnatic are looking to beat that by a good 60 seconds. Mantaraya is up, so is slow, but it doesn't even matter. Down goes the Nexus and Fnatic with a commanding game one victory. Reckless and Caps both did not die, nor so as fantastic performance from the European side here of Fnatic and the third seeds that are coming in from the major regions. They are a daunting opponent for anyone to go up against. That proves true for groups A, B, C, and now D. Yeah, we are four for four. Definitely a different caliber of opponent for some of these emerging regions to face, and they have seriously had a wake-up call, but Fnatic all smiles for this team as they walk off with a big victory. Remember, 
Many of these guys missed out on Worlds last year. This is their chance to try and make up for lost time. I do respect that KLD were excited to play against Fnatic, but you could also see the high spirits of knowing that it may not have been the game that they thought they could win, but they were just going to do their absolute hardest to try and upset the European side. But that was by no means an upset. It started early and it just kept snowballing and snowballing. Yeah, it's always a lot you can learn from losses too, especially against an opponent who has a much better grasp of how to play the game. For Fnatic, you know, early game was definitely key. Really liked what I saw out of the Rek'Sai of Broxa. He's had some critique come his way in Europe for maybe not doing as much as he needed to do against some of the teams in the European LCS, but I mean, this Fnatic squad is definitely looking pretty scary here in the plans. Yeah, and the best you can do to fault Fnatic at all is say maybe their engages weren't fully as a team, some slight mistakes there, but they were 10k gold ahead when they did that, so maybe it just didn't matter. They were just throwing themselves at Chaos Latin Gamers because fundamentally they won a 2v3 in bottom lane, and then the game was over. That's yep. actually just how that played out. There were very few tense moments for Fnatic. I think the closest you can really talk about was when Broxa pretty much gets caught inside the blue trying to steal things away. So you could argue maybe they should not always go too deep into enemy territory, yep. but they were having a good time, and you know, they definitely were able to throw their weight around effectively. Yeah, the one mistake from the Rek'Sai still gets himself out in trades ultimately, and again, that might just be the caliber difference here between these teams. I think it definitely is the case. Now, to break down that win for Fnatic, let's send it over to our analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I think a very strong win coming in Fnatic, and it's going to put a lot of European Fnatic fans at ease because there were some questions when they fell down after the regular season and fell apart in playoffs, but now making a pretty big statement with the first win. It looks pretty good overall, I think, especially when you are looking at some of the biggest question marks, potentially being their rookies, their younger guys, and both of them had two great games. Uh, and I like I liked the team comp they put together for the most part. A lot of engaged. Galio can follow up on that Rakan fairly easily. Good scaling as well. We've seen the Zyra Rakan bot lane now pretty consistently so far in the tournament. Smash. And it's one of those things as well where when you look at Fnatic as a team, one of the best lanes that they've had uh, throughout the regular season was that bottom lane, especially their 2v2. So you give them a, a champions like Zaya Rakan, uh, and you're almost likely going to have them succeed. The, the big interesting ones for me were the fact that we saw a bit of a return to rise. We already see it come out in the meta. We talked about it earlier today. Uh, and it comes out for Caps, where he has brought it out in the past, but now he seems to be returning to one of those more comfort picks, along with a bit of an early game jungler in the form of Rek'Sai. And on KLG's side, I do like the comp they put together for a little bit. It does have a lot of engage potential and snowball on the bot side. So, you know, we're talking about maybe you can limit some of Reckless going off potential. Uh, but the problem was the early decision that they made with the Elise was was pretty suspect going on as a level two with only blue buff is, uh. is a bit of a disaster. You have no hard CC. They couldn't quite combo it together. And once they gave that advantage up, the Shen and the uh, Cassio weren't faring that well either. They didn't really have any pressure points after that. It's very true as well. Brox are playing very aggressive in the early game, which was a shift I think that uh, EU analysts wanted to see. It was one of the big criticisms levied against him was that he wasn't very aggressive on a lot of the jungle picks. Yeah, and it was nice to see that on this Rek side, he was looking to always try and get involved in the early game. We saw a very early gank mid, following the play that happened down bot to already start the snowball in the middle lane. Soaz was left off on an island, but that suddenly resulted in him joining very quickly once the fight started happening very yeah. early on. Uh, the, the fights are the big talking point. And as we look at one of these first big skirmishes brought to you courtesy of Acer Predator, uh, I think it's safe to say that Fnatic, this is pretty much the road to die. Yeah, and one of the, the key players I feel we need to keep our eyes on is Soaz in this fight because you'll see him TPing in from the flank. And note here that KLG, they actually get a really good engage off. And if Plugo can come in with the Casio, this could have been a much worse fight than it actually was. But Soaz was zoning the Casio away from a lot of the fight, and then he's still able to join it. And this is where the turnaround happens. Yeah, after this, it's a pretty easy chase down. I like the way Reckless is able to play this fight out. Uh, so I was going to come forward, still has that flash, going to threaten that flash taunt. It makes KLG want to turn on to him, but he's still able to go forward. Combo that with the Reckless CC. They're going to be able to chase down a couple members here. End up getting the four for uh, O, I believe it is. So this is a pretty big uh, stomp in the early game after this because all your champions are online after that. Even the crowd is loving it. You can hear them. <laughs> And of course, this is the thing where we have to start asking and talking about the way that Group C is shaping up, because ultimately, Chaos Latin Gamers were able to take down Young Generation. It did look pretty Chaos Latin Gamers favored past the early game, and now Fnatic sweeping them pretty much, dominating them from, from the game star from those first few early fumbles. Is this going to shape up like another Group B? It's certainly looking that way, uh, how the initial games have gone, but again, you have to remember that Group B, we saw a lot of changes coming into day two. You just hope that uh, Young Generation have a better showing up against Fnatic than they did against Chaos Latin Gamers, and maybe they go back to more towards uh, just changing up their drafts or changing up their style. Against Fnatic, you, you're definitely the underdogs, so just, just 
try something different. Right, I think that's the big thing is that uh, young generation probably want to get a little bit of momentum to head in for the KLG rematch tomorrow. It does feel like just based off this performance and what we saw earlier in the day, Fnatic are the definite favorite for this group. Now looking at that rematch though, because I think that is the biggest talking point about securing seed two. Of course, Fnatic haven't locked anything yet, but with a performance like that, it's hard to put them away from that favorite position. So talking about young generation, talking about KLG, KLG, how do they shore up some of the weaknesses they showed here? How do they show up that early game? Because if young generation could come in swinging as hard as Fnatic, did today, it feels like it's going to be a rough road. Well, we talk about sometimes how people try and attack uh, another team's play style in some ways, as opposed to playing their own. The Elise, uh, while we talk about Tearwolf being the aggressive playmaker for his team, and he's someone who's supposed to lead them into that mid game, going for a level two gank around the bot lane, around the enemy team's strength, is a little over aggressive. And I'd rather see him try and take that around the top side. I'm fine with him playing Elise and being aggressive, but he just needs to be a little smarter with it. It's also about recognizing some of the opponent's weaknesses in general. One of the big target factors that has been uh, towards Fnatic in the past is actually at that mid lane. You have a Cassio and Elise that can very easily shut down a no cleanse yeah, rise. That was big. So I felt like that he had options available to him, but he was a little too tunneled on. I gotta try and get this bottom lane behind. Well, we're gonna see how that adaptation works out. We've got Hong Kong Attitude facing off against 1907 Fenerbahce in just a few minutes. But first, let's check in with Fish, who's standing by with Fnatic's victorious mid laner. Hey guys, I'm here with Caps mid laner for Fnatic after their victory in that last game. It was a really one-sided affair there, but first I want to ask you, you know, first time here at Worlds, are you excited to be at the biggest tournament for League of Legends? I'm insanely excited to be here, uh, especially after our loss in the playoffs, where it actually became a reality that we might not even make Worlds. Um, and when we managed to win the, the regional qualifiers, I was just... I was so happy, like, it, we, we finally made, managed to make it, and even though we were third seed, and which was not really what we had uh, hoped for, um, it was just insane to actually make it. And but now we hope that we can uh, play our way through, uh, through through Worlds. I mean, it's a slightly longer journey, but hopefully you guys are able to make it out of the group stage here at Play-Ins. Uh, next, I want to ask you about your rise, because it's a pick that a lot of people know you for, and it seems like a very comfortable champion that you got to pick up in game number one. Was this something that was just comfortable for you, or something that was planned going into game one? So I don't want to leak too many strats here uh, uh, after game one, but uh, Rise is definitely something I have played a lot in the past and it's something I'm really comfortable with. Um, usually I have like my little montage moment when I play Rise, but I didn't have this game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just something that in the draft seemed strong and it was something I ended up picking up. Well, it definitely worked out. You've already talked about how, you know, coming into third seed, you have a little bit longer of a journey, but are you looking forward to the rest of the playing stage? Are you confident going up against your opponents in your group? I'm really excited to be here, as I said before, but um, I think we have struggled a lot with like overconfidence in the past. So I think this time around we will just take it uh, a bit one game at a time and we will try our best to just become the best team we possibly can and, and never disrespect any opponent. So I'm not going to, I don't want to, like I'm going to, I don't want to go against that and, and start saying that we're confident we can, can do something. Well, that's great to hear. Congratulations on your victory and best of luck later on the rest of your matches. Oh, it's